So in this video, I'm going to break down why Manchester United struggle to break down West Ham, looking at recurring issues in the central midfield, analysing Ronaldo's movement throughout the game, and I'll also be suggesting patterns of play that Solskjaer's side should have used more often to break down West Ham. But before that, for cheap good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfifa.com, a link will be left in the description, and use code AlantisFootball for 5% off. So West Ham approached this game differently to how they did last season, which I did make a video about, and we'll leave linked in the description below in case you want a point of comparison. Last year Moyes predominantly used a 5-3-2 system and against United at Old Trafford he deployed an extremely passive 5-3-2 shape which saw West Ham retreat into their own half and allow Fred and McTominay space on the ball in the middle third. However in this game Moyes used a 4-2-3-1 system which would fall back into a 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1 kind of shape out of position and West Ham were looking to engage United a lot higher up the pitch in a build up phase in an attempt to stop United pushing them back into their own half constantly. Solskjaer used his usual 4-2-3-1 system which moves into a 2-4-3-1 shape in position and Moyes instructed the three midfielders sitting behind Jared Bowen to push up onto Fred and McTominay and deny them the sort of space that they had allowed them last season. Now West Ham did an excellent job in the first 30 minutes of sitting in a 4-4-2 and stopping United progressing the ball into the final third with their four-man midfield sitting narrow enough to cut off the passing lanes into the likes of Pogba and Greenwood in the half space but also wide enough to allow the wide midfielders to push out and stop Shaw and Wambasaka from being able to progress the ball forward when the ball was shifted out to them. But throughout the first half I thought United had the same issues in position that we saw and I analysed in the matches against Wolves and Newcastle which was against a relatively compact defensive unit, Solskjaer's side were not moving the ball quickly enough in the middle third. West Ham's narrow 4-4-2 meant that when United had the ball on the right side, Shaw had massive amounts of space on the left flank and whilst we did see Pogba a few times switch play with long passes I thought United didn't do this enough. Instead of being assertive and direct and getting the ball out of their feet and playing the pass over to the open space, the likes of the two centre backs as well as Fred and McTominay midfield were far too focused on merely circulating possession rather than progressing the ball forward. United should have been circulating the ball from right to left, and when the opportunity arose, they could have used a long pass more often to free Shaw down the left and create a 2v1 situation in the left channel against Kufal. Despite United having more of the ball, West Ham were having better action around the box with a few shots from the edge, which whilst weren't clear-cut opportunities, were certainly showing that United were vulnerable when West Ham did have the ball in the final third and eventually they did get the breakthrough. If we look at the goal from the build-up, there isn't a clear and obvious mistake from United, but what I would say is that they're very passive in their defending around the box. When the pass goes into Kufal from Fornals, Fred needs to be tighter or even win the ball or at least stop Kufal from playing this pass back inside for Bowen and when the ball reaches Ben Rama on the edge of the box, his shot is rather tame but the deflection of Varane completely wrong foots De Gea as it trickles into the opposite corner, giving West Ham the lead. Now West Ham were doing a great job of stopping ball progression through the centre of midfield but I thought United didn't utilise the flanks as much as they should have. Often we saw Shaw and Wambasaka receive the ball in the flanks in the final third, essentially in a one-on-one -on -one against a fullback. Now if this was say Teo Hernandez, Jao Cancelo or Alfonso Davies in these positions, this would have been perfect for United, but Shaw and Wambasaka particularly are not great one-on-one -on -one dribblers and so when they got into these positions they would often turn back and play a pass back to one of the central midfielders. What should have been happening is as soon as the ball got shifted out to the United fullbacks in these advanced positions, they should have been underlapping and overlapping runs being made but United didn't do this enough throughout the first half and when they did after the West Ham goal we did see them get into good positions with Fernandes combining with Greenwood and Wambasaka in the right channel to make a third man run in between the fullback and centre back and get into a promising crossing position. Now this lack of interplay in the channels is something I have mentioned before and later on in the video I will come on to how I think Solskjaer can make a few alterations to add something to United's attack. However, one thing that continued to be impressive was Ronaldo's movement in the box. He made multiple clever runs from out to in where he drifted over to the left or right side and waited for the opportunity to make a run down the side and in behind the West Ham centre-backs, which led to shots inside the box. The goal he eventually scored was very similar to the first goal against Newcastle last week. Fernandes picks up the ball on the left side after United restart an attack and you can see that Ronaldo has already positioned himself on that left side in between the left back and centre-back in the perfect position to make a run into this area. The ball from Fernandez is fantastic. Ronaldo does well to get the initial flick which is saved by Fabianski but he also has the sharpness to follow up the shot as he did against Newcastle to knock the ball into an empty net to make it 1-1. 
Going into the second half, we almost saw the effectiveness of United's aggressive pressing, with Ronaldo's chance after a wayward pass inside by four nails, filled for Fernandes, who created a chance for Ronaldo, which Fabianski did excellently to save. In fairness to Solskjaer and United, their pressing and defensive shape for the last year or so has been very solid. They continuously use the 4-4-2 defensive shape, which moves to a 4-2-4 aggressive man-to-man -man press in the opposition's defensive third before they drop off into a 4-4-2 shape in the middle third if the press is beaten. Now as I stated in my prior videos, United still looks susceptible to a quick transition and attack through the centre of the field after a turnover, and this is due to the lack of athleticism and one-on-one -on -one defending ability in United's midfield. This meant that there was constant danger of West Ham winning the ball back and feeding it into Fornals, Ben Rama or Bowen to lead the counter-attack, driving right at United's back line. Before I get into my analysis of the second half, remember after this video to check out some of my other videos which are linked in the description, such as my video on how to make Anthony Martial great again, how I would use Ronaldo in multiple different systems at United, and some of my other Manchester United content as well, which will be linked in the description. Throughout the second half, the game followed pretty much the same pattern as the first. United controlled most of the ball, as West Ham retreated into their 4-4-2 shape, and United struggled to break them down, having a lot of the ball in the channels but failing to do much with it. The same could be said for West Ham at the other end, and I think Antonio was a massive miss for them, as without him, they didn't have a player in the forward line who could be used as a target man to receive direct balls and bring the midfield into play, and when in the final third, West Ham lacked that assertive and dominant movement in the box that Antonio brings, particularly from crossing situations. I thought Declan Rice, Kurt Zuma and Ogbonna all had good games for West Ham, with the centre-backs getting their positioning spot on from crossing positions, and Rice making a few very good interceptions and tackles to win the ball back. But United would eventually get what turned out to be the winner when Matic played a sharp incisive pass into Lingard in the West Ham box and Zuma despite having a very good game up until that point initially should shift over quicker to stop Lingard receiving the ball but once he allows him to turn he has to show him down the line or at least prevent a shot which he doesn't do and credit to Lingard is a moment of brilliance to ping the ball into the top corner to win the game. Now I won't go over the penalty incidents at both ends at the end of the match but I wouldn't say that United were fortunate even with the penalty miss as it recorded a higher XG than West Ham and had better chances and should have had a penalty with Ronaldo being brought down by Zuma at the other end and even the penalty that was given was pretty harsh in my opinion but David De Gea showed why he's regarded as one of the best keepers in the world to win United two points from this game. Now despite me thinking that United did deserve this victory, Solskjaer needs to sort out the main issues in possession against these deep compact defensive units. The first is ball circulation in the build-up phase as I said before, is far too slow, and the second is the interplay on the flanks. United had a real lack of quality crosses in this game, and when Fernandes put in a perfectly weighted curling cross, Ronaldo scored from it. I would suggest that having Fernandes and Pogba drift over to the channels more often to get into these crossing positions will create more aerial opportunities for Ronaldo to take advantage of, and also work on the movement and passing in the channels, having more over and underlaps when Wambasaka and Shaw received the ball, as we saw a couple of times that when United do make these third man runs into the channels, it can be a great avenue to create a chance, but wasn't done enough in this game. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video remember to subscribe, give the video a like, click the bell for notifications, put your thoughts in the comments section below, go to the description to check out some of my other videos as well, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more content as well.